Hello and welcome to this fresh episode of Tech Quantum. We are back again with Rachit Gurk and this time we have some questions regarding manufacturing. So before we start, hello Rachit. Hi Parish, hello viewers. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. Thank you for all the feedback, responses and support. So Rachit, we have a burning question. Now, master planning calculation in terms of supply chain management, which is a bigger part of your FinOps. In terms of that, what we want to know is what does Microsoft provide in terms of master planning calculations or let's say uh, planning optimizations? To, so do you have any add-in or does it run under Microsoft Dynamics 365 FinOps itself? So if you can give a brief overview, that would be really great. Sure, Paresh. And this is actually a good topic nowadays because planning optimization has been released. It's available in product and there is uh, some confusion in the market where people are not able to uh, really relate what it is. Uh, so what we will try to uh, do is uh, summarize what this is and how it is different to the previous master planning. So we'll start with uh, a very brief summary of what master planning is. So master planning is basically a process to consider your demand and generate a order plan based on it. So for example, what is your sales forecast looking like? What are your current sales orders which you have already confirmed which you have to fulfill? What are your, for example, transfer orders which you have to fulfill? So it's in a nutshell, it's an engine which takes all these inputs and then creates an order plan which tells you, okay, these are the things you should buy or these are the things you should produce or these are the things which you should move between one warehouse to another warehouse. Now, this, this process is called master planning and the output of this process is called a master plan. What used to happen till now is that this whole process of complex calculations and generation of order plan used to run within Dynamics itself. So dynamic spin-offs or the previous versions uh, ax2012 so this whole calculation used to run uh, within dynamics now with the, with the release of planning optimization what microsoft has done is they have taken this complex calculation outside of finance and operations which means the load on the database the the load on the aos server has been taken out and it has become a service which is running running in microsoft azure in a nutshell this is planning optimization so planning optimization when you enable it you have to install it via lcs as an add-in you don't have to actually download and deploy it as a package you have to enable it through lifecycle services as an add-in and it can only be done uh, on tier 2 and above environment so as of today let's say in february 2021 this planning optimization cannot be enabled on developer uh, machines or tier one environments. It can only be installed via LCS as an add-in on tier two and above environment. So this is on a high level uh, planning optimization is for age. So what I could understand is that uh, you definitely have a planning optimization engine, which runs out of Dynamics 365 FinOps, maybe to increase the performance. Uh, but what I would also like to know is what is how does it add to my business value? What is its business value that I should care about? Yes. So that's a good question, Parish, because uh, as a business, we need to understand what is the value which is coming with this new planning optimization engine. So uh, what used to happen in past was that this process of order generation or order plan generation used to run as a batch process at night after business hours so that if this is running it should not make the system slow and because it was all running within dynamics it used to take a very long time and that was one of the reason it was scheduled as an after office hours process and next day in the morning the business users used to come and review and take some decisions but now with this planning optimization running as a service in azure it's very powerful it's like it's called hyperscale which basically technically has a very deep meaning inside it. So Azure experts can understand what hyperscale means, but uh, just keeping it short here, it's an hyperscale service, which gives you a very powerful platform to run these complex calculations. So processes which used to take, for example, hours, four or eight hours, they just now literally take minutes to run. 
it depends uh, like customer to customer or the volume of data but it has really cut down the uh, the time which used to take to run master planning and as a result it actually impacts the way the businesses are running so what is happening is instead of running uh, this as a overnight or a out outside office hours uh, process users are able to run it during the business hours without overloading the uh, the application which the current users are using so as a result you can do more frequent plannings uh, during the day and with that you can improve your supply chain and speed it up so as a result your whole supply chain movement increases and your lead time decreases and your uh, you know planning is better it can be done during business hours you can run it multiple times you can adjust it as per the demand uh, scale up or down during the day so i think that is adding a lot of value in the business and that's where this business value is flowing back by bringing planning optimization outside of finance and operations yeah richard so definitely i can understand that um, you know the performance has increased over these years making it running on azure definitely you can apply more resources it's an a uh, hyperscale engine so definitely you can receive your uh, output in minutes uh, which as a customer i can see that i can make much more faster decisions now rather than waiting o- overnight or the next day to wait for my results now having yeah. said that as a user can i modify the output of the uh, what comes out of of the planning optimization engine sure yeah so parish every business is different and supply chain is complex so companies have their own unique ways to handle uh, the supply and demand so when you have to modify the order plan um, there are two things one one the once the planning optimization process finishes it gives you a planned order which is which can be there is a setup to automatically form it but you can actually uh, you can modify that plan order manually but if you want to apply some algorithm or translation to the order plan which has been generated by planning optimization engine there is capability to extend dynamics by writing x++ code and write your own logic on the order plan returned by planning ex- optimization engine so having said that uh, what it means is you can actually not modify the algorithm running in the cloud that you can't touch but you can modify the results it has returned and you can apply some post processing logic you can also apply some pre processing logic so before the data is fed to planning optimization engine you can sort of run some algorithm so what happens technically is there is a connector between finance and operations and the planning optimization engine which is running in the cloud and when the master planning is triggered the data is transferred to the planning optimization service through this connector and the algorithm is run in the cloud and the output which is the order plan is pushed back into dynamics so you can uh, write x++ code to pre modify or post modify the results uh, but we have to be careful if you write your own logic on a, a high volume uh, data set which has been returned so there can be performance implications so some best practices needs to be taken care of and we also have to be mindful that planning optimization is a service which is running in cloud and it's not only for finance and operations so future could be that this service is taking input from finance and operations and also from other systems which are in your application landscape which can feed some demand forecast or sales forecast to this engine so so the future looks more uh, attractive with this service uh, so yeah uh, i think that answers the question we can definitely modify it uh, but we should also be mindful that planning optimization may cater to various applications down the um, road well, that's a good news uh, rachit because as per my business needs like as a customer my business needs can can differ and it's good to know that i can uh, put some changes over there now uh, the other question is since you mentioned that it is running in azure and outside d365 environment so the first question is is it free or is it chargeable to the customer right now and also since it is running outside the dynamic spin off environment does it cover all the business scenarios right great question <laughs> so um, as of today in february 2021 it's a free service uh, we don't have to pay for it uh it comes as a part of your finance and operations uh, subscription uh it is only available in tier 2 and above environments 
Now, when you talk about business scenarios, things can get little tricky here because manufacturing is a complex domain. So what Microsoft has actually done is I'll quickly share my screen. They have, if you can see my screen, there is a article on Doc's site. I will share the link with the viewers. This is a fit analysis page. And what Microsoft has provided here is a, comp a list of features, uh, what are covered in the current planning optimization algorithm. And if features which are not covered, when they will be made available. So here you can see, for example, coverage groups within actions calculated enabled will get uh, available somewhere in October this year. But there are some features which are coming in April this year. Um, so if this is a long list, it also tells you which scenarios are supported. Uh, so for people who are uh, into manufacturing domain and who wants to read more about various scenarios, what's available now and what's coming further this year, this is a very good reference and landing page to kickstart and build an understanding of what's available as of today and what's coming further down this year. Yeah, that's a uh, great resource, Rachid. Uh, please do share that link and we'll provide that in the description of this video. Um, now, uh, this is the last question. If I want to know more about this particular um, optimization engine, uh, where should I go and look at? Sure, Parish. So, um, Microsoft Fast Track team is doing tech talks on this topic. So, there was a tech talk done actually last year on the same. I will share the link. Uh, which viewers can go and uh, watch. And there is a tech talk happening this week uh, from the Fast Track team, and it should be made available on the Fast Track page uh, most probably next week. So I, I would recommend uh, people who want, who want to explore more into this area, go and uh, watch that tech talk, which is a full detailed one hour presentation, which takes you through a journey and deep dive of the architecture. Thank you, Rachit. And uh, to all our viewers, uh, all the things that uh, we just discussed in this video, we'll try to provide those resources in the description below and you can definitely go ahead and check it. I hope you got a good overview. Well, definitely manufacturing is a complex subject. We'll keep coming with uh, new topics over here. And if you have any demands, please do write us in the comments and we'll try to bring up uh, in our next video. For now, we'll just say bye. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you.